Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about freight brokerage terms to know, just different words that you should know when brokering freight or that may be used in the freight broker industry. One of the first words is adjustments. Adjustments are going to be any costs that, going to, that have been attained after a shipment has been delivered. So for an example, let's say you have a driver and he goes to get unloaded or loaded and they need the driver to assist with the load. For example, maybe he need to bring the pallets to the end of the truck. Then the broker may say, hey, we'll pay you, but they need driver assist. So what they have to do is go back and make an adjustment to your rate confirmation to add that additional charge on there. OK, another adjustment could be for a lumper. Let's say, for an example, you have a refrigerated load that reefer goes to get delivered and they pay lumpers at that facility. Well, if that driver or your company already paid for the lumper, then a lot of times the broker will reimburse you. The only thing you have to do is turn in your receipts, but they will go ahead and adjust your rate confirmation. Alrighty, so the next word we have is a freight agent. Now, a freight agent works up under a freight brokerage. And a lot of people get this term, I guess, backwards. Um, a freight agent works up under a brokerage, and I normally compare it to real estate. So in real estate, you have a brokerage firm, and the real estate agents work up under the brokerage firm. The only time you have a license is if you have a brokerage, okay? So if you physically own a brokerage, you do have to apply to get your authority through the FMCSA. And when they issue your certificate of authority, that is going to be called your license. So I get a lot of phone calls and a lot of, you know, people that are looking to become an agent. They always say, do I get a license? No, you don't get a license. You do get a license if you're opening up a brokerage, yes, but if you're working up under a brokerage, no, there is no license that you need. Um, you do need the training so you know what you're doing, but you would be considered a freight agent or a freight broker agent, okay? A backhaul. So basically, let's, let's look at a map here. And since we're out of the Atlanta area, um, we're just going to use Atlanta. So let's say I have a truck and on our dispatch side, we find that truck a load from Atlanta, Georgia, going to Detroit, Michigan. OK, so once that driver gets there, a bad call is just another load. He may want to come back to Atlanta or he just may want to go somewhere else. A lot of times if a driver gets a load going somewhere, they may say, well, can you get me a back call? They basically, they don't want to, he doesn't want to be stuck in Detroit, Michigan. So he wants another load either coming back or, you know, headed to that direction of Atlanta. You may can't find anything coming to Atlanta, but they may have a Detroit, Michigan going to Lexington, Kentucky. It's still bringing him back down south. Okay. So. A lot of drivers on the dispatch side will tell you, can you get me a back call? If I go somewhere, can you get me a load coming back? And that's all that a back call is. Righty. A bill of laden, normally you receive this when the driver goes to pick up a load um, to get loaded. He will receive a bill of laden where that shipper who loaded him will sign off on it state in you know basically how many pieces he received or so forth and then once that driver goes to get delivered at the facility they will sign the bill of laden and it's basically your proof of delivery the bill of laden is one very important piece that is needed within um, trucking for various reasons if you're on the freight brokerage side and you brokered a load to a carrier you must receive the bill of laden because now you have to show proof of that bill of laden for your customer to pay you. Okay, this is an example of a bill of laden. 
okay? And again, this bill of lading shows the pieces, the weight, and again, the shipper, LG, LG Electronics signed off on it, the carrier signed off. They also put on this one the driver's, um, driver's license number, probably because it's electronics and it's a high commodity. And some bill of ladings, you may have several pieces. Some may just have one. You know, each load is going to be different. You know, it's going to load by load cases. All bill of ladings will look different. Not all bill of ladings will look the same. Okay, so basically it's your proof of delivery. This is how you get paid and this is your money. If you own a trucking company, you have to turn that bill of lading in to get paid for that load. Whether you're going to factor that load with a factoring company um, or whether you want that broker to pay you direct. The bill of lading, just think about it as your money. No bill of lading, no payment. Bill of lading, payment. So it's your proof that that load was delivered, picked up and delivered. <coughs> Okay, blocking and bracing. On the dispatcher carrier side, if you're looking to book a load and you call a broker for a load, they're going to tell you everything about the load that you need to know. They may also advise you'll need to block or brace the loads. And basically, it refers to wood or any support used to keep the shipment in place. Okay? A blind shipment is when the shipper and receiver are not aware of one another. The freight shipment is called a blind shipment. Now, also in this case, sometimes you may receive two bill of ladings, what we talked about previously. You'll give the sh you'll have one at the shipper and one for the receiver. Okay, so it's a blind shipment. Your brokerage license. We mentioned briefly about this. Your brokerage license is going to be the authority that you get from the FMCSA. They're basically granting you the authority to run your company as a brokerage, and it's called a brokerage license. Again, that is when you own and operate your own brokerage. It is not required for you just to be a freight agent or a freight broker agent to work up under a brokerage. You only get a license when you have your own brokerage. Okay. Even the bigger companies, they have a brokerage license. A carrier is just a person or company who transport the freight for free. So any owner operator who owns his own trucking company, any trucking company is considered as a carrier. Coming carrier is just anyone hired by anyone to transport goods. A concealed loss is when the recipient of a package is not able to see the damage to the items until the package is open. So basically the damage was not visible at time of delivery. And once they opened the package, then they saw the damage. Consignee is the receiver. So wherever you go get delivered, that's gonna be your consignee. Consolidation, just think about to consolidate. It's very easy when two or more shipments are combined to save money on freight shipping. So for example, a lot of times you see consolidation is, let's say you're going to get loaded at a shipper. You may have one pick and two drops. So you're picking up two different loads at that shipper, but it's going to two different locations. So again, we're going to go back to our map and we're going to use Atlanta, Georgia. All right, so we have our map here. We're picking up a shipment out of Atlanta. Let's just say it's going to be a load of pillows. Okay. Well, it's going to be from Atlanta to Detroit, but we're since since the shipment is an LTL where you know one shipment may be five pallets and the other shipment may be ten pallets. Let's say it's going to go on a dry van. Um, our truck is already headed to Detroit, but we have another company in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, if you look at his path that he has to take to get to Detroit. He's going to pass Cincinnati, Ohio on his way to Detroit. So we're going to consolidate that shipment. We're going to put both loads on one truck. We're going to give him two drops. He's going to drop in Cincinnati, and then he's going to drop in Detroit. So we consolidated that shipment.
A container is going to mainly be for your intermodal shipping. Custom Brokers is normally referred to, um, they're licensed by the U.S. Treasury Department and they act on behalf of freight importers and exporters. And they handle the custom transactions. An embargo basically is anything that prevents the freight from being accepted or handled. So let's say if there was a flood or tornado or the highways were congested, um, that basically prevents that freight from being accepted, okay? An exception is when a problem such as a shortage or damage is noted at the time of delivery, okay? So they will note it on the delivery sheet before a sign that there was a problem with the shipment. Gross vehicle weight is going to be your total weight of the transport and its cargo. So everything, the total, the gross vehicle weight. Inbound freight is going to be shipments that come from the vendors to a storage facility. If you look at some of the distribution centers, you will see that they have some of the, the great distribution centers. They have docks on two different sides. So one of the docks is going to be for inbound. The other dock is going to be for outbound. So if you ever worked in a warehouse or you know someone that works in a warehouse, normally they have um, the inbound side and the outbound side. So inbound is when their freight is coming into the warehouse. Outbound, outbound is when it's going out. An interline is a transfer of freight from one carrier to another. Now this could happen Let's say you have a carrier on the load, and let's just say his truck goes out. You know, the motor of his um, truck or something goes out. Well, you may have to find another carrier to deliver that load for him. You know, he may be stuck on the side of the road, and he cannot deliver for whatever reason. And interline is when basically you get another carrier to come in, they hook to the trailer, and they deliver the load. Time critical is going to be when a freight shipment delivery is set to the earliest possible time. Basically, we need this freight ASAP. Have you ever been to a grocery store? And a lot of couponers may, may experience this. Um, they go to buy a particular item and it's out of stock, you know, even around Christmas time. You know, everybody wants that particular toy, but when they go to purchase it, it's out of stock. This actually happened to me with the Amazon Echo. Was it the Echo? Yeah, I believe. Um, and, um, you know, it was out. So I had to basically wait. So time critical is when a, a product or a merchandise is very sensitive. It needs to be delivered as soon as possible at the earliest time. You know, that store or facility needs it. Time definite. Basically, is the definite time that the delivery will occur on a specific day or time of the day. So, for example, if you look at the video on rate confirmation, it will give you a time. If it's an appointment time, hey, this load needs to deliver at 6 a.m. That's time definite. The transit time will be the total time from pickup to delivery, how long it would take for that product to be in transit. Okay, and then a truckload, normally that's going to be a, a full truckload of, of freight. Sometimes you will see LTL, and that's going to be less than truckload. Let's say I have one pallet of blankets to ship. That's going to be LTL. One pallet is not going to use up a whole truckload. So basically with the truckload, normally means it's going to take up a full truckload. If it's a 53-foot or 48-foot trailer that you're using, it's a full truckload. If it's an LTL, it may tell you, hey, we only need 10 feet of space. So that will be LTL because you're not using the whole feet of space or the whole truckload. 
And basically, warehousing refers to storage of goods for a specified period of time. Um, we will do another video on more terms to know. But, you know, if you have any questions, visit our website at www.bumblebeedispatch.com and or email us at info at bumblebeedispatch.com.